Today, we're gonna to check out Alpaca's new tool called Chroma. It's an AI canvas. You can draw, import images, prompt, and create AI art at the click of a button. It also has other cool uses, such as restyling images or adding details. It also works well with a drawing tablet, so you can draw straight into the canvas and create images from there. This is powerful for saving time as you can outline your idea and create high quality images with AI. This video is also sponsored by Alpaca. So to check it out, check out the link in the description. So let's jump in and see how this works. So log into the Alpaca website with your account, head down to Generative Tools and click on Chroma. When you land, you're gonna get this example image on the left, which you can use or others on the right, along with this sample prompt. But for now, I'm gonna actually clear the canvas with this bin icon. And I'm gonna type in a new prompt, a fox with fiery glowing fur in the dark woods fantasy art. And then what I can actually do is start to draw what I wanna see on the left over here. So I'm gonna grab this draw tool, which looks like a brush. I can change the brush size. I'm gonna start pretty big, pick my color down here, which I want to be a bit of a burnt orange. And I'm just going to basically draw a really basic shape here. And you can also just grab a smaller brush if you want to, to draw some of the other details. So I can bring that size right down. If I want to draw something here, a bit sharper. But for now, I'm gonna to go to my eraser. And again, I can adjust the brush size and I'm going to make some adjustments by simply dragging to remove some of what I've actually put down. Come back to my draw tool and draw in a few other little details. Remembering that if I have the draw tool, I can bring my brush opacity down and even start to introduce some semi-transparent sections or even use this to create some basic shadows. So I have my really basic fox. And down the bottom here, we have presets. So the way this works is the far left, it will try to generate an image that is extremely close to what I've drawn. The far right gives Alpaca the most freedom to generate something using that as a reference, but it'll still kind of keep the layout more or less the same. To show you just how powerful this is, I'm gonna click on Wild first to give Alpaca the most freedom, and I'm going to generate that image. Now in this particular instance, it's actually confused the front from the back. It is a pretty, pretty poor drawing, <laughs> but Look at the quality of the artwork it's created. It's actually kept the two feet in front, two feet at the back, and followed the layout. So if I go to Creative now and Generate, it's followed it probably a bit more closely. So you can see how we get a result that is a bit closer to what we drew. Now, when we go back to Controlled, these two options are designed for more detailed drawings, but I'll show you how closely it follows. You can see it starts to get a little bit simpler and down with Pro, almost a little too simple. And you'll see that the fox is actually really simple and almost very much like the drawing I created. But I'm gonna cut away for a second and show you some examples of how you can use this more precisely. One of the ways you can uh, take advantage of these pro and control settings is to draw a very highly detailed image on the left and simply take it to the next level, draw as much as you can and then enter your prompt and you'll get something that lines up really close to it and you'll have a lot more control over the output. And you can experiment with pro or control or different styles within your prompt to see what you can get. But I also had a ton of fun by importing old drawings and digital art that I created in the past. And using pro and control, I was able to get some interesting outputs based upon that artwork. So I highly recommend actually, if you have anything, scan it in or dig it up and pop it into Chroma to see what you can make out of it. However, you can also think a little bit outside the box. I actually took my logo, imported it into Chroma, and I kept it on the really tight pro setting so I could get the uh, logo looking pretty close. I was able to generate some backgrounds behind that logo and take that a step further as well. So it's not just about artwork, it's also a great tool for design and any ideas you have visually. But let's jump back into the tutorial. Now we're back with our simple fox. But notice how the background is looking pretty good. That's because we have nothing added to the background. It's transparent, so it uses a bit more freedom in that space. I'm gonna come back to wild, but I wanna show you something that if you need to change the background color, you can do this without it affecting the image. So the way it works is if I come to background fill, if I need something, say I'm drawing something that is black and I need a white background because it's hard to see against the gray, I can give it a very light background or even a gray background 
and it won't actually impact the generation. So if I hit generate, you'll notice it hasn't impacted the background. So that's a handy tool for drawing, but it doesn't actually negatively impact the image. So I'm gonna bring the background fill back to like a dark gray. So you can see how with our brush, we can draw onto the canvas. Our eraser, we can erase, but with our select tool, we can take things a step further again. I can select certain elements. I can rotate it, although I've selected one of the shadows. Select various elements, move them around. Now I have the mouth. I can make it bigger if I want to. I can rotate it and I can basically move bits and pieces about. So maybe I want to get rid of this white tip on the tail. I just click delete and it's gone. The other thing I can do is I can still make changes to my drawing. Grab my brush size, get a slightly lighter color and start to add, if I put that opacity back up, start to add in some details here. If I want to have a little bit more influence over the image. Again, this is pretty rough. We generate and now our fox is facing the right direction. The other thing we can do too is instead of fantasy art, I can say a realistic 3D render, change my prompt, hit generate, and now it's changed the style again. So what if I make a mistake? I grab my select tool and I accidentally move the body. I have undo and redo if I need to actually go through and make those changes. That's the basics of drawing something with Alpaca Chroma. But what if we have an existing image that we want to work with? I'm going to come down and bin my creation and come up here to upload image. I'm going to choose this Muay Thai fighter I drew a few years ago. I use it uh, quite often in my videos. And I'm just going to size him up. Now, keeping in mind, if I use these side panels, it will stretch. So I want to sort of grab these corner blocks to resize proportionally. I come down here and change my prompt. A powerful Muay Thai fighter wrapping his hands. I have my image in there. I can bring my presets down to Pro to see how well it handles this and click Generate. You can see it's done a pretty good job of following my artwork pretty clearly. I can go up to Control, just step up again. Creative, which is another step up. And finally, Wild to see how far we can go with it. And you can see it's produced what is essentially a photograph of a Muay Thai fighter in similar vein to what I have actually uploaded. But what if I want to upload another image? This time I upload my logo, which is a transparent PNG, and I can actually put transparent PNGs of objects onto this image. Now this is a logo, it's probably not the best thing to use, but if I bring it back to controlled and I add anime style art, white logo, top right, and generate, I've got my anime style art and I've got my logo, top right hand corner. Now keep in mind these presets here, uh, actually just presets for these settings on the left. I can come down here, play with the freedom and the detail, bring up the prompt influence and work on my own specific sort of combination of these things. So these are from left to right, that is less freedom by Alpaca, more control from your image across to more freedom from Alpaca. But this allows you to play with that a little bit more specifically. So let's generate again. We get a different result once more. Now I'm gonna come back to wild generate again because i chose anime style it has a bit more of a visual style to it and let's say that is the image i want i can come up here to my three vertical dots download the generation output which is this image on the right or i can download the side by side view so this is our single image we were able to download and this was our side per side so we can actually keep track of the before and after if we want to show this artwork off anywhere else but here's something that is also pretty cool. I'm actually gonna dial it back yet again to creative and I can actually click this arrow and it will pop that image into the left-hand side. I can move it around and reveal the old image if I want to. For now, I'm gonna go undo and I can come back to control and regenerate. You can see it's actually gone a little bit crisper and gone a little bit further down the rabbit hole. And I like the idea of doing that, clicking across, regenerating, and you can slowly create iterations of your image by bringing them across and doing the same thing again. This time we'll go to wild, generate, and you can see we've got something a bit different again. Now, another thing you can do if you wanna clear the canvas is you can go through these input examples. So if I click on this one, it gives me a prompt and I can actually just go ahead, start creating images straight away and see what Alpaca produces. But here's where things can get interesting. If I click on this example, close-up portrait of a knight, a castle in the background, Unreal Engine. The background is transparent. 
So like I said before, Alpaca will actually fill that background with a more, it has a bit more creative freedom where there's nothing drawn there. So if I go to creative and render, you see how it's created the castle in the background. And because I've given a bit of creativity, we've got this really awesome looking image of a knight. But what happens if I change the background? And you can see it says Unreal Engine, which is why we've got that 3D look. So we've been able to change the style of this image from left to right. But what happens if I change a castle in the background to a futuristic dystopian city in the background? The night looks much the same, not exactly the same, but then we have this more futuristic background that matches. So that is a pretty cool example of what you can do with this platform. But moving on with the examples, you can see we've got another one here with a whimsical house on a cliff, soft mood, fantasy, again, controlled, and that looks pretty good. Crank it up to wild, and you get something a bit more detailed. But you can scroll through and have a play with these. We've got a kid's drawing here, but there's one more I wanna show you, which is this. It's an octopus with a transparent section in the middle. Now, by default, if I generate this with the current settings, it produces an actual octopus. Now, if I change, this main subject, we have the seafloor 3D animation. And I put down in here, a futuristic scuba diver with large cables floating around and hit generate. It will actually still fill that space with my prompt, but notice how it's fit inside that little area there. That is incredibly powerful. And if you have transparent PNGs, you can upload that and try the same effect and see what kind of results you get there. So. That just gives you a bit of an idea of how you can use these examples to learn the platform and have a bit of a play and have some fun. Now, I'll also have a few tips and use cases for this tool. I'm gonna to start off, once again, we have a blank canvas. And because of the transparency being something we can use quite flexibly uh, and having it sort of have all the freedom it needs, I'm gonna go up to creative and give myself a new prompt. A small cat standing up on its rear legs, Pixar 3D animation. Hit generate. And you can see how by using a blank canvas, we've been able to use it as a simple image generator. But also if I drag this across, now I say a small tiger, keeping the preset on creative, I generate that, now it's converted it to a tiger. So we can use this to kind of like take something similar and convert it to something else. I can change it again to something else. So from small tiger to a small dog, and now we have a dog. So it's really fun. You can actually play with uh, something similar and instead of trying to get the same thing, trying to use something different or contrast away from your original image can be a lot of fun and produce some really, really impressive results like this. But let's go over to our knight over here. As you can see here from before, we were able to generate this close up portrait of a knight, castle in the background, unreal engine. If I hit generate, I get this image here, which looks pretty cool. But what if I change Unreal Engine, which is a type of 3D render, into something else, such as a 2D pencil sketch? Now we've been able to change that style of the image. And we can continue to upload images and change the styles pretty effectively. It can be a traditional art style or just like a medium type, even a type of movie. Pretty much your imagination is the limit with any of the styles you want to try. You just have to try and think of a phrase to describe it. This can be a ton of fun to experiment with. Now you can actually speed things up pretty well with shortcut keys. So a lot of them are pretty obvious. When you hover over the tool set, you'll see select, which is V, kind of like the shape of the arrow. Draw, which is B, so B for brush. E for eraser, background fill, so G. If I want to change the color of my brush, I just hit I on my keyboard. I get the eye picker and I can choose a color. And we've got Control Z or Control Shift Z if you are looking to undo or redo. But there's a few others as well. If I click the brush tool and I use the square brackets, you can see my brush size here. The square brackets will increase the brush size or decrease. So the left bracket decreases, the right bracket increases. There's a few cool little options there. You can also hit Control S to save an image or Control Shift S to save your generation. If you don't have a generation, you can also just hit Enter and it will start to generate. And also you'll get little tips as you go. So you can hit actually copy and paste images from other editors into here. Again, if I want to hit Control S, I can save that image as well. So again, some of the use cases, obviously we can use it as a straight up image generator by leaving the canvas blank. We can draw images to create. So that means that we can create starter images that we then go off and edit later or even certain things we can add photos on top of. So if you want to have a background generated and pop someone in front of it, you can use it for that. 
So you can save a lot of time with your imagery by using this as a way to get things started so you can use your skills to finish it off. And then things like taking that cat image, for instance, taking small objects and changing what they are, but keeping the shape or the pose pretty much the same, restyling images like we did before, trying out the same image in different styles. And a final tip, speeding things up with shortcut keys. And you can take these into Photoshop and because these images are like 1023 by 1023 pixels, nothing's stopping you from using the Alpaca plugin to go into upscale, popping it up to a 4X, generate, pop that upscale into a new document. So we go from our original image, which is 1023 by 1023 to this newer image, which is 4092 by 4092 and you can see the upscale does a pretty good job so you can actually combine the photoshop plugin with chroma to create some awesome images and then you could do what you want with those images and edit them from there now you can do this all for free with 100 generations per day on the free tier or you can pay ten dollars a month for unlimited generations using alpaca and because of the fact that it integrates with photoshop as well you don't have to use Photoshop to create the imagery, but it is the ultimate companion for any digital artist out there. So check out Alpaca, use the link in the description. Now I've been talking to these guys and there is a whole lot more coming to make this even more powerful. So check it out today to get ahead of the curve. Otherwise, I hope you found that video uh, helpful. And if you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, have a great day. I hope to see you again soon.